Hello, I'm Deirdre Clemens. Pope Francis was quoted as saying, educational manipulation of children has its roots in totalitarianism. Schools are becoming re-education camps. I have 10 kids and the oldest five have nine degrees between them. They've attended public schools, private schools, and when we were overseas, I homeschooled them. I'm a successful educator and I pick curriculum. I believe our kids are being put in harm's way, especially concerning U.S. history, where instead of objective facts, including names, dates, and events, our books are filled with political bias and opinion with the effect of subverting our children's minds against this republic and our free market system. This is directly opposed to our law in Florida, Education Code 1003.42, which states, and I quote, we must use books and materials that meet the highest standards for professionalism and historic accuracy. American history must be viewed as factual, not constructed, with arguments in support of our republican form of government, nurturing and protecting democratic values and institutions, teaching the importance of free enterprise to our economy, stressing patriotism, responsibility, citizenship, respect, and self-control. I found a problem in history, and it's systemic. How about some examples? Here's a history assignment from third graders at Pelican Bay that says, in essence, Thanksgiving is a hurtful holiday because it stands for the beginning of the end of the Indians. And here's an eighth grade assignment from Pine Ridge Middle School called What's an American? that states any person who truly wants to be an American already is, even though they've never set foot in America and live in another country. And if your child is in 12th grade U.S. government class in Naples, their book is Principles and Practice. It has two pages comparing capitalism and socialism. It tells that Marx argued the working class was treated unfairly by the capitalist system, that socialism best protects workers' rights, and as an example, the UK where health care is paid for by the government is shown. The last paragraph states that the inequalities of capitalism harm the greater good and it is fair to provide everyone with their basic needs. What do you think a teacher, teenager takes out of that? If your child is in an AP US history course, you will find that it concentrates more on historical thinking skills rather than names, dates, and events. Now here's a sample of a long essay question that they put on their uh, website that uh, could be on your final exam. Question is, what's the, was the American Revolution truly a revolution? Here it states that one correct answer could be no, because George Washington, Jefferson, and Adams were just as rich before the wars after, and besides, nothing changed for women, Indians, and blacks. Now, if your child is in a regular high school U.S. history course, they'll be using this, the Americans. And in this, they will learn about the 19 socialist mayors who are touted with their progressive reforms. They focused on dismissing corrupt and greedy private business owners of utilities and converted them to publicly owned enterprises. And at the end, they give you a summation that progressives, which are also socialists, they admit, are accomplished the 40-hour work week, the end of child labor, and voting rights for blacks and black and women, despite Republican conservative capitalist business owners who are the foils throughout history, according to all of our books. Thank you.